I was an electrical engineer, um, I was an electrical apprentice before that. Um, I ran my own contracting business. He was always very busy. In fact, as a family, really, we, we saw very little of him. He worked seven days a week sometimes, often doing paperwork, and, and sometimes it was quite stressful. It was sort of about 40 years after, 35 I'd say, after the my apprenticeship, that I started to get pains at the bottom of my chest here. It spread then to my back and up my back and all around the front, front part of my chest here near your heart. There was one particular day I came home and he was actually on his hands and knees and you couldn't hide the pain. And that was the, when he was taken into hospital and it was the paramedic who actually said, have you worked with asbestos? Not until I heard, he told me on that day I'd never heard of the disease. They sat us down in a chair and he more or less said to me, you're going to die. Three years ago, Simon Clark was diagnosed with mesothelioma. It's a cancer of the lining of the lung, caused when he breathed in asbestos fibres early in his career. We weren't given any protective clothing, no masks, um, nothing at all. No training, no, uh, we had no knowledge of it. We had to go and um, crawl through all the loft spaces, um, where there was all the insulation, which sometimes was asbestos that had been pumped in. We had to go down all the service ducts that had asbestos lag pipes in them. We had to chop out walls, make holes in walls. Again, quite often they were lined with asbestos. It's almost impossible to estimate just how much asbestos there is out there. Just about any building constructed before the year 2000, you could probably assume that it's got asbestos in it somewhere. The places where you'd probably find asbestos in an average building is in corrugated roofing, in ceiling tiles, lino, you could have asbestos lagging around pipes, often you can find it above ceiling voids, asbestos you'll find in many different places including Artex that you find in many domestic homes. There are around 5,000 deaths from asbestos related diseases every year. That's compared to an average of 1,700 deaths on the UK's roads. That means asbestos-related diseases are claiming the lives of 94 people a week or 14 people every day. All trades and professions that work in a building that's being maintained or refurbished could be at risk of breathing in asbestos fibres because the fibres are invisible to the naked eye, they're in the air. Just one exposure to asbestos-containing material can cause cancer and terminal diseases, like Simon's mesothelioma. His diagnosis was immediately life-changing. It was only a few days after they diagnosed me, they had me in the operating theatre. I had a six-hour operation. I had two, two hours in recovery. It's one of the biggest operations that you can do. It's, it's like open-heart surgery. What they do is they cut you home remove your lung, they then remove the lining of your lung and then they scrape all the tumour off your lung because what happens with mesothelioma, it grows around the lung. So in between the lining of the lung and the lung. So that's why it's difficult to diagnose because it's only a, well, it's not in a mass, it's, just, it's all the way around your lung. They then removed part of my diaphragm, um, they removed part of the lining of my heart and they also removed the tumour off the side of my oesophagus. The most scariest thing, I think, was the fear of losing him. The thought of being alone and the children not having their dad. I can't even bend down and put my socks on very well without getting out of breath even now. That's because I've got no diaphragm. So when I bend down, I can't breathe. Um, uh, Trish, I'll tell you, not being able to breathe is horrible. It's horrible. I can't walk far. I can't, well obviously couldn't, can't lift heavy things. I take the dog out every day, that's the only exercise I get really, is taking my dog out. Uh, I walk her probably two miles maximum, but that will take me two hours. So you can see how slow I'm, I'm having to walk and having to stop and gather my breath again. And I miss all my golf, you know, cycling that me and the wife used to do when we went on a, in our caravanning. So I, I can't do any of that anymore. No cycling, no golf, no fooling around with your friends, you know. You lose all that. 
Simon's focus is now on raising awareness of the dangers of asbestos. There is still a gung-ho attitude from workers as well that don't think it's going to happen to them. I'm the proof that it can happen to you, and it does happen, and it's happening to 5,000 of their colleagues every year. Currently in the UK, there are three main levels of asbestos-related information, instruction and training. Asbestos awareness, known as Category 1, is for persons liable to disturb asbestos-containing materials, ACMs, while carrying out their normal everyday work. This is likely to affect people across a range of professions, including, but not limited to, those listed below. Non-licensed work with asbestos, including notifiable non-licensed work, is known as Category 2 training and applies to all those whose work will require them to disturb ACMs, such as drilling holes in asbestos materials, including for sampling and analysis purposes, or removing asbestos-containing floor tiles. Finally, Category 3 training is for licensable asbestos work. For the average contractor and professional person employing people in the construction industry, to make sure that their staff, their workers are safe, there needs to be an awareness of asbestos. And depending on the type of activity they're carrying out, that may be properly done by giving asbestos awareness training. This doesn't equip them to remove it or to handle it, but at least to be aware of where they're likely to find it and what it looks like should they come to expose it. Once the risk has been identified, it can be transferred through contract to specialist contractors to make sure that the asbestos is then removed. But they would then be coming in and doing that in a professional way, having then been paid for their services. But the primary responsibility is that of the owner and operator of the building. So how should ACMs be managed once they've been identified? ACMs found to be in good condition should be left in position, protected and managed if they're not in vulnerable locations. ACMs in a poor condition that cannot safely and easily be repaired, or those that are positioned in vulnerable locations which could easily be disturbed through work such as demolition or major refurbishment, should be removed. For now, Simon's mesothelioma is under control, but there is no cure for this disease. I still get sad and I still get upset on some days and I'm in pain all the time. Pain doesn't go away. I'm on medication to painkillers um, every day. Um, but you get used to that and I, I can just about cope with that. But it's the upsetting things. It's, it's, it's the little things like, am I going to see, see my daughters go down the aisle? Am I going to be able to take one of my daughters down the aisle? God, that used to, used to upset me. It still does, very much. Because one thing as a dad, what you want to do is be able to take your daughters down the aisle. I feel s sad about the future, really. I don't think about the future very much because we take each day as it comes, we take each month as it comes, and we just hope that Simon can live as long as he can, as healthily as he can. That's, that's what we want. We want him to live healthily as he possibly can for as long as he can.